So both of your paths was a little different, right? You had your straight from Radford, mm-hmm. right? Even though you registered one year, you're still experiencing a whole mm-hmm. different level and speed of play, mm-hmm. right? And for you coming from California, transferring back, mm-hmm. right? I'm sure there's still a little different speed of play that you mm-hmm. have to transition to. So what was the transition like for both of you guys? Like when you got to UH, was it something that, oh, it was pretty seamless. Like, you know, you've been accustomed to all of this. Or was it something that was eye-opening in the beginning? Like it took some time to actually transition to Division One level mm-hmm. sports, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, it, it was eye-opening because everybody was so much stronger, so much faster, and the weight room was something that I wasn't accustomed to, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I never hit the weight room until I got into college, and I will be honest, like coming in as a freshman, I was probably one of the the, the weaker freshmen. Like I couldn't bench as much, I couldn't mm-hmm. squat as much as my my friends like they were all stronger than me you know so it, it, it made me make a goal for myself mm-hmm. that by the time i leave this place i want to make sure that you know i work hard and i i can become one of the stronger ones and mm-hmm. i was able to do that you yeah. know i know they're listening they might be listening but <laughs> sorry guys you know <laughs> still to this day you, you still i see all of your videos oh, you know? oh man <laughs> yeah strong strong man level status yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. but no i like that you you know it plays a big part in yeah, your life right? you, you, once you get used to or introduced to the strength yep. and conditioning aspect and how much benefit uh-huh. it brings not only to football right mm-hmm. but just with everyday stuff right, right. It, just, it forces you to adapt you got to adapt to that new culture you know mm-hmm. and then um I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm gonna mention that um i remember there were kids or there were, there were student athletes that were you know, super high school great athletes, you know, like all state caliber, you know, like blue chippers. But there are some of them that, that came into school and like they had the talent, but just the work ethic wasn't there. And I think mm-hmm. that's what separates mm-hmm. good athletes from greater athletes in college mm-hmm. because, you know, there's there's guys that's hungry, you know, and then there's guys that thinks they think that they arrived already mm-hmm. and then they don't realize that guys that are working hard are passing them. Mm-hmm. You know, so definitely just adapting to that culture, yeah. that d- developing that work ethic, you know, that mentality that, you know, it's you got to go in and not just work out, but you got to go in with the mentality that you're going to outwork everybody. Yeah. That's that was huge. And it took me a while to to develop that mindset. You know, yeah. it took me a while to, to realize that and develop that. No, that's you know? that's, that's so exactly true. true right. Yeah. Because at that level, right talent is going to kind of even itself yeah. out so now it's more the physical aspect yeah. and yeah strength and conditioning well at any level right mm-hmm. the skill level goes up but strength and conditioning at the college level yeah. it's way up yep. because mm-hmm. you have way more time to dedicate to it yep. mm-hmm. you know you have a full-on strength and conditioning staff which mm-hmm. you typically don't have in high school right as yep. much so all of those things is going to help to elevate your game further mm-hmm. prepare you for football right because yep. Again, the speed, the physicality of Division One football, yep. mm-hmm. way different than Hawaii football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean that's so true. You know, I think a lot of athletes can take that to heart too. Mm-hmm. Is you gotta work hard mm-hmm. on the training side of things, yep. not just in practice and mm-hmm. show up for games, right? Yep. And talking about your experience mm-hmm. too, what was that transition like for you? Because it is in a different way, right? There's certain things in volleyball that, as the level goes up. Mm-hmm. everything else kind of elevates uh-huh. with it too. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I um, in high school, we played Imike, so uh-huh. I got to play with like Daddy Mafula <laughs> and Liz. So when I uh-huh. transferred home, I was actually playing with some of my club teammates. Got it. So it's kind of nice. And we were blessed to be able to work with some of your mm-hmm. guys' workout stuff. So mm-hmm. like Marcus was saying, I think it's just, you got to put in your work. Yes. Like They're going to tell you a workout. You work as hard as you want mm-hmm. if you... You yeah, know, you, it's all, it's totally up to you. You get all what you put in, you know? yeah. Yeah. But that transition was a little bit easier because of high school. They kind of uh, built us up mm-hmm. into that same system. Got so it. coming from California back home yes. was like a breath of fresh air. It was like I was back home. And... Got it. That, um, was it St. Mary's you said? Yeah. In California? Yeah. What, I'm not too familiar. So what oh, yeah. level was that? That was that a division, division one school. One yeah, it was in the... What conference were they? WCC. Oh, got it. So what, Gonzaga got and it. Um, Santa Clara, all those. Got it. So East. that transition from high school to St. Mary's, mm-hmm. even that, because you oh, were yeah, playing totally. with the club players, you were kind of not as big of a jump, you thought? Yeah, it was... It was different. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Their their training was a little bit more different. Got it. It wasn't so much weight. It was more like conditioning, so like running miles and eating good. So they had a nutritionist for okay. us. Yeah. So it kind of helped me like 
trimmed down we when I it. went up there. <laughs> you know, we don't have the rice and yeah. eggs and spam that we have here. Yeah, that makes all so all like they sense. really watched what we ate. Got it. We, so theirs was more like nutrition and mm, conditioning. Okay. It wasn't too much of strength. Got it. So when I came back home, it was kind of like more of what I knew. Yeah. But that it was kind of good for me though to learn all that nutrition because that's important too. Yes. Like what you put in your body. Yes. Man, well, man, you, you are what you eat, yeah. Yes. yeah, totally. If you knew back then what you know now, yeah, it's one oh, of those. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, totally. Jack in a box and basket of Rogan's. Jack in a box so much. <laughs> what, what was that? Your pre-game. <laughs> so that, that was, was our like our off season. <laughs> yeah. So what, was, what street is that? Oh my it? gosh, it's, oh, it's a bad story. <laughs> I think it's on South King Street. So there's a Jack in a Box. So we drove through Jack in a Box. This is off season. This is not yeah, during yeah, season. Yeah. You know, this is when we just we just finished our season. Just want to have a good time. We drive through Jack in a Box. We buy whatever we buy. We eat there, and then we drive right across the oh street to Basket Yeah, let's go. Like Basket Street or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah it's right there. That's why we joke about Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box and Basket Street. Like right. right after. In one night, it was. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, that's that's some great stories, memories too, because you gotta you gotta you know have indulge on some of these yep, foods and stuff, yep. and it's off season, right? Yep. You yeah. work so hard during the season, so uh, that's that's funny too. And you know, talking about your transition, how you said it, it was a little you know more, I guess, seamless, right? Mm -hmm. You got to kind of play at these levels and then get used to it. It sounds like it really helped when you came back to UH. Still Division One, right? Yes. But a little different atmosphere little different oh, types totally. of makeup right yeah. um very different yeah more competitive too right you have oh, a yeah. lot of a lot of teams that are in the playoff picture every year mm -hmm. ranks right totally. so what was that like um for you coming from st mary's transferring to uh mm -hmm. i mean we know the first game story so obviously <laughs> she handled it very well yeah. but but what was it like for you you know making that transition from a d1 school to another d1 school mm -hmm. It was it was good. It was totally different culture. Like mm -hmm. St. Mary's was this really nice, like rich town with a lot of like richer folks. Okay. Which um, our crowds was maybe like twenty to thirty people. Oh, that's like, it. Yes, yeah. For a D one school, one yeah. I was uh, like, wow, this is a smaller school. But um, actually, Kapua Kamanao Kanoi's mm -hmm. sister was my setter out there. Okay. At St. Mary's, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, it, it was different. It was a different culture. Uh, I loved it though. Uh -huh. Nothing wrong with it. But um, coming home was definitely like a yeah. huge shocker. Like, <laughs> oh, man, crowds fun. are like huge. 20 Great. is like practice for us, <laughs> right? Yeah, there are people it's watching just, you practice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then to like add on the TV, like, yeah. I know like my teammates would, I, I didn't know. I was just like, whatever, uh -huh. just go on the court and yeah. play. But. I had to eventually learn, like, okay, put yourself together a little bit. Like, <laughs> right. Camera's on. Camera's, yeah, camera's on. on. Yeah. Kind of like really say stuff, like, gotta yeah. watch what you say and all that mm -hmm. stuff, like, when you get frustrated. Yeah. You know. 